Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Daniel. That's Manuel. We uh, work for Google in Munich, and we've spent a lot of time developing different uh, C++ tools and C++ tooling libraries. Um, let me start with a bit of history. Uh, about three and a half years ago, Manuel was actually at the LFM Dev meeting in, uh, in Europe and presented this slide as sort of the conclusion of his talk, which is we need all of these things, right? So we need different like, Clang-based tools like for automated formatting, linting, renaming stuff. We need libraries for tooling, refactoring, uh, for like doing something smart with the AST, and a lot of, lot of other stuff, right? Um, now, right after he came back, um, I looked at these slides, uh, uh, and a bit of background for me. Um, right at that time, I had just joined the team, so I was very new to, to everything in the team. I looked at the slide and say, yeah, that's going to be a bit of work, right? Uh, but I also had just come from a Java project where I coded Java and Eclipse, and I thought, well, it, well, it doesn't have everything of uh, like what we have here, but um, it has some of the nice things. And I thought, yeah, we want to have all of that. Um, so I've basically taken that slide and, and took and uh, like take an inventory of what we actually have, and I think it pretty much looks like this. Um, we have written Clang format, uh, renamed Clang lint to Clang tidy. Um, and, like um, bu built all the libraries. Uh, we do have most of the editor integration and some IDE services. Um, I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail on all of those uh, because we actually have a demo that we hope um, shows what you can do now with uh, C++ tools. Um, but I want to call out a few like, key things we have built. Uh, one is Clang format. It does automatic source code formatting for C++. Um, it's pretty widely used by now. So can I get a quick raise of hands who has used Clang format? Yeah, nice, great. Uh, the reason why we started it, well, we had many reasons. Um, mostly we wanted, to, we wanted source code to be uh, machine editable so that we can, at large scale at Google, refactor our source code without a human having to go in and, and changing stuff. But as, also, well, if you, if you look at coders, right, everybody thinks, well, my code is like a unique, beautiful snowflake, um, which is probably true in most cases, but please don't make that through white space, right? Um, let Clang format handle the white space, and everything, everything should be fine. Um, we've added some new features over the last year or so. Um, mostly, you can format more languages now. So shockingly, within the Clang and LVM tree, you have now have a JavaScript and Java formatter. Uh, which is kind of nice. Um, just about uh, one or two months ago, I added include sorting. So um, I always find it tedious to have like, to just sort includes like manually or with uh, Vim commands or something. So Clang format can now do that. Um, yep. Um, then somebody else has uh, written you complete me, which basically does all the like editor services. Um, it has started out as basically just a code completion tool based on libclang. It can do now much, much more. Um, it has like a fast syntax check. So if you misspell something, you like, like within a very short time, you get it underlined in, in Vim. Uh, you can go to declarations and definitions. And uh, as of recently, you can also apply fixed hints. Um, more hopefully in the demo, uh, if Manuel messes up typing. Um, then we have Clang, with Clang Tidy. As I said, that was originally de designed as a lint tool, but it can do much, much more now. So we have like. It's an extensible framework. We have more than 50 checks in it. Um, it has checks from readability, so do this and don't add that brace and stuff like that. Efficiency, so you don't accidentally copy large objects. Uh, correctness, to, to, to avoid bugs. And you can even modernize your code to use like, range-based for loops, um, use auto where applicable and stuff like that. Um, and it's also a very good tool to get people start on, on working like C++ tools, because it gives very, access, uh, very easy access to AST matches and uh, preprocessors, and that's also why we've chosen it uh, to demo that later. Um, quickly about AST matches, uh, Clang's AST is very nice, a uh, very nice representation of like C++, but it's a pain to navigate. If you have to, to write a C++ tool and navigate the, the C++ tool um, manually, that's a lot of work, so um, we've developed a domain-specific language with which you can find very specific AST nodes and do stuff with them. Um, we've added uh, several, like, there are several talks about those, and you can look them up. Uh, we've added a lot more features now. Um, specifically, you can uh, match more types of, of AST nodes. Uh, 
you can find back references. So the one matcher A finds node X, and an another matcher finds a node that equals this node. Um, if, you, if you know how AST matches work, you basically write a matcher expression, and then for every AST node, a callback, callback gets called, and you can now actually start a subsequent matcher within that callback, which gives you a lot more power. And maybe most importantly, to actually get started with it, we now have a tool called Clang Query, with which you can, on the console, develop your matchers and rerun them on the on a translation it very quickly. Uh, any questions so far about anything? Cool, then let's not talk about these tools, but let's use them. Uh, we've prepared a small demo. Uh, we basically want to take one of the things from the LLVM coding standards, which is use early exits and continue to simplify code. Right? It's something very fundamental that, who agrees that this is a good idea? Cool, so we're gonna write a client tidy check to enforce that. Okay, and with that, uh, I'll hand over to Manuel to actually um, show you how, how you can write a client tidy check. And uh, I think we have like 15 minutes left. Uh, yeah, you. 15 minutes should <laughs> be enough. Enter code monkey. Um, so we have a pristine checkout of uh, the Clang tools. Uh, right, nothing up our sleeves here. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> we'll just add a new Clang query check, uh, Clang tidy check. Right, and we have a little program here that is called add new check and it tells you how to use it so we'll put we'll add a readability checker and we'll call that early exit and then we'll start compiling and running the tests and so this basically adds all the boilerplate so you don't have to write that every time you start a new check because we want you to write many checks so this adds a uh, header and a CPP file for the checker, and it also already adds a little test and documentation to fill in. Um, and we'll basically start with the test. We have a passing test already. So this has already filled in some magic stuff for us. We'll look at that in a moment. So we'll just start to do that in a kind of test-driven way. Can you, can you type reset? Because the bottom two lines are not on the screen. Where? The bottom like, two I mean, uh, if you type okay. reset and then... We're, we're in Vim in a moment. Wait, okay. I think that's easier. Um, so this is the test that it generates. It, for, it generates a lot of explanations of what you really want to do. For today, we don't really need all that because I will explain it why we are going. And we'll write a function that we want to fix, right? We want something that is wrong where Daniel in a code review would go and tell us like, Can please. add a few lines? Like, because it's not on the screen. Yeah, that's better. Is that better? Yeah, sure. Um, and, right, this is a typical example. We have a, a function that only has an if, and there a code reviewer would probably go and tell us that we want to use an early exit here, and that's approximately in column five. Uh, no, column three, one, two, three. And we can delete all the other stuff. And now we have a test. This is how you test Clang tidy checks. And we can run that test, and we will see that it fails. It, it fails currently in a strange way because the little program we call that created our check already added a check, actually. So we'll look at that now. And it, in the Clang tidy directory, under the readability, we have a early exit check, CPP. And that basically has two functions. It has a register matchers functions, where we use the AST matchers, about which Daniel just talked to actually find what we want to uh, mark, and then it has a check callback that gets called every time the AST matcher in the, that we registered matches, where we will produce our diagnostic. And the first thing is, how do we, how do we figure out um, what AST matcher to use? For that, we have a couple of tools. Are we visible? Yeah, just cool. about. So first we have clang check dash AST dump, which will give us, we'll look at the We'll just dump the 
test and we'll see the AST and we see that it has a function tackle, right, and there's a compound statement, an if statement, that's all stuff we probably want to know. Um, but what we now use to actually create the matcher is we'll call Clank query. And it doesn't have the parameter ASD dump. And here we can um, create our matcher. It has a help function, and it probably will run out of the display very soon. But yeah, that will be interesting. Um, so we can match. It has. It gives us uh, completion results. So that's tab completion, right? So you don't have to remember all the matcher names anymore. If you have ever worked with AST matchers, that's an amazing feature. Matcher compound statement, is that visible? No problem. Yeah, some of them. It's some of them, okay. You want to match a compound statement, and inside that compound statement, we want uh, to do something for each if statement. Uh, so we now actually find our function, and we also want to later figure out what the if statement was, so we can bind this to an arbitrary string. We call that if. And it tells us, right, that the if we found binds here. And then we look at what if statement, statement provides as submatchers. We just use tab completion. It has, we can call it has condition. So we'll actually want a condition. Uh, that's just an expression. And we'll want to bind that, right, and add the right number of parentheses. And then we have the condition. Um, what else do we want? What else can we do with an if statement? We one day has th then, right? That's the part where we want to do the early exit. And we only actually want if statements that have a um, compound statement in them. And we bind that again to the string. Then, what else can we do? Uh, we have has condition variable statements. So for ifs with condition variable statements, we probably don't want to do anything. So we just, so just say unless has condition variable statement. Um, that's a decal statement. Yeah. Can we? Unscale the slides. Just hit that one magic button again. Uh, I'll just continue. We also don't want uh, to have anything, any if that has an else. And again, I have to add more parents. Yep. You can see, you can see my parents. So this looks like Lisp, uh, <laughs> which is also why I'm, ah, the has else, of course, takes a statement. Uh, da -da -da -da. Ah. Like parentheses counting still seems to be a hard Yes. Thing. There we go. <laughs> Great. You, you can see that I have some practice with parentheses counting. Um, so that's roughly the matcher we want. We'll just copy that, right? Copy paste programming. Um, did I actually copy that? And we can paste that here now. And then we'll make that look not as bad. No, you didn't copy the F. But maybe YCM will tell us. Yes, YCM does tell us. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. And now it told us. Um, apropos the F, we probably also want to bind the top level function statement, uh, function tackle. Whoops. Okay, and now we have a method. So can, can you show that again? Like how, how, how have you made it look nice? 
I have meshed a key in Clang format, made it look nice for me. Okay. And now every time this matcher matches, we'll get a callback down here in the check implementation. And we'll just want to diagnose on the if, right? So we'll pull out the if. Oh, and, and do you see how quickly you complete me highlights the now non-existent symbol method decal? I find that helps a lot because if you would have to go to a separate shell, like run your Clang compile and then like seconds later get the actual syntax error, that actually takes a, lot, a much longer to understand, like to, to iterate on, on such things. So this luxury, yeah. So libclang tells us this code looks somewhat correct. Let's try to run it. And it doesn't pass our tests. So what does it say? Uh, I think I messed up. The I think you forgot to um, remove one of the check things from the generated test. Oh. I see. That makes sense. Yes. Let's remove that. <laughs> Heck fixes. <laughs> nice. And the test passes. <laughs> <laughs> now the problem is we don't want that test to pass, actually. We, we need another test, I think. Um, because, like, what, what, what happens if we do that, right? Uh, if A, G, and G. Right, it's, 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 this is not as easy to transform into an early exit, so perhaps we don't want to warn here. And un unfortunately, we still do warn here. Right, it tells us it, it, it found a warning, right, and that was not expected. Um, so what, what we'll do now is we, we take another part out of the statement here. We actually need to bind the compound statement. Uh, there we need to count parentheses, luckily enough, uh, Vim helps us with that. Let's make it look nice. And then we'll just get the compound statement. And maybe I should explain more, like all these pop-ups, right, this is not just uh, where it, uh, code completes, it's actually really using libclang and clang to find the correct type name. And we'll do that correctly even if you have templates and all that stuff, right? So, this is, I, I, like, to me, what you complete me actually makes Vim into a proper IDE. Like, like, that's the one feature I really need. So what I did here was, if the if statement is not actually the last statement in the compound statement, we will just say we will not warn here, we will not be able to, whoops, we will not be able to fix that. Uh, and that makes our test pass. So now we don't only want to diagnose, we also want to fix stuff, right? So what do we re really want this to be fixed into? Let's get our test back in. So we want an early exit, so we want to uh, inverse the condition, right? We want to say, if not A, like, we will not, in, in this talk, actually make this all really nice, so we'll just put parentheses around the A. Uh, and if not A, right, we want to return. And then, after that, we have the comment, which we need to check, right? Uh, and after that, we want to see our call to G. And then we probably want only one of the closing braces there, so we check that there is a closing brace, and then we check that there is not another closing brace until we hit the, the second function. Let's call that F2. And that test will obviously break, right? Uh, it tells us that it wants if not A, but it found if A, right? So, let's actually make our check do that. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to replace the condition. There are two ways we could go about that. We could take the whole condition, um, get the text of it, and replace the whole condition with the text, with edit, 
not friends around it. Um, but we found that it's uh, better to try to minimize the edit, edits we do, because people might have comments and other stuff that's not really well represented in the AST. So what we do is we just insert the not opening paren at the start of the condition. So for that, we need to get the condition out. And the condition is an expression. And now uh, plank tidy provides an, a nice way to generate fixed hints. We want a to create an insertion, and the cr insertion takes a location and new code. And the location is the conditions. start lock, and we'll insert not opening paren. And what we do with the fix it is we just pipe that into the diagnostic. And now we want to insert something at the end of the condition too. And uh, inserting something at the end of the condition is slightly harder because we need to know the, because Clank's uh, source locations are basically token-based. And while I'm going to edit some code here, Daniel can explain a bit more about that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, so, who has worked with Clank's source locations before? Who liked it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duck, yay! <laughs> Right, um, so Clang represents every single location in your program as, well, an integer. Uh, it basically concatenates all the source files into one large chunk with macros, like macro expansion locations coming from the one side and all the source files coming from the other side. And furthermore, the Lexa parses the source stream mostly into token locations. So. Every, every single location you get out of the AST, like with the condition lock start, will, will point at the like, first character of a token. Um, so if you then want to insert something after the token, you have to re-ask the Lexa, well, how long is this token and how do I get there from this location? And this is basically what Manuel is doing now. So he adds the, uh, or he basically calculates the, the lock for the end of the token uh, from the end of the condition, right? So the end of the condition will actually point at the first location of the last token of the condition. And we have a fix it. Let's see how that worked. It will not fix our whole test yet, but we hope we can see that it does something. Yay, and it says, well, it still expects if not A return, and now it says if not A. So we, we made the program incorrect now. That's bad, so let's, let's continue. So now, how will we fix that? Um, so now we will first replace the opening brace of the compound statement of the then with return semicolon, and then we will just delete the closing brace that is in the end, right? And that will make our program correct. We'll just leave the function call there. Like, right. So what, what Manuel has done for the second test, like he, he wrote two tests, right? The second test has the function call after the closing brace. And what he has done is actually tell Clang tidy to ignore those cases. Right? We only do that if the compound statement is actually the last thing in, in the function. Right? We, like, w before we check in the check, or maybe like to like, iterate, like, so first check in this one, and then we accept patches to fix the other cases, right? Like we found for, for many client tidy checks, it's really valuable to solve the easy cases first. Like, as, as you'll see, like we, we're gonna run that, that check on like client tidy itself, and it will actually find quite a few cases. Uh, I don't know whether you've noticed that. What Manuel does after writing the error is typing GLS, right? Because the you complete me does like fuzzy matching of like the code completions that it has, so GLS, will like then get lock start will actually be the first match. That's 
like, highly, like highly useful to type faster. So one more interesting part is, right, that due to the source locations being token-based, we tell Clang to get a token range here, and we just give it the start token as start and end, and that will actually cover the token's whole range. And then we'll create a replacement. We'll take the opening brace range, and we'll replace that with return semicolon. And then we'll basically do the same for the closing brace. And then we'll pipe that into the diagnostic. And let's see whether we did anything wrong. And it works. Cool. So let's look at our tests. What else could we do here? Like, well, early exit in function is nice, but we also might want early exit in loops, right? we might want something like, well, take a pool. What also helps to think about test cases to run the actual um, client tidy that you've just generated over some actual code, and then you'll quickly find cases that you will either want to refactor in a different way or uh, don't want to refactor at all. Uh, I think we're going to see that in a bit. Yeah, that's another of those cases where Daniel in a review would go like, ah, can you please use early exit here? Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Like, I, I think if it's a single statement, it's fine. But Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure we can adapt the check. <laughs> We're not going to do that in this talk. Right? So, okay, we have a failing test. Uh, it says it wants that warning. Um, so we'll have to first adapt our matcher to actually match that, right? And one nice thing about those matcher expressions is that we can just pull them out into local variables. Just reuse that in a moment. And this is actually something where auto is really, really useful because the type of these matches is not trivial. Like we've used, to our shame, a lot of uh, macros and templates to actually uh, create this like kind of language. But with auto, it's kind of nice. And then we. Just add a second measure, right? And we say, oops, we want a for statement. And probably want to bind that to something else here. Something like that. And libclang tells us that compiles. Let's see whether that really compiles. And that compiles. I think we should and not, I mean, it's pretty for, like how long do you need for the continue? Because we have like four minutes left. Okay. We don't like, need to do it. Okay, yeah. so we can easily change like insert continue instead of return. But I think it's actually interesting now to run the check on, on an actual like client yep. tidy source file. Can you sure. do that? Hopefully I can do that. I also think I didn't save just now, but that's fine. Oh. Uh, I did something. You need a working client tidy for that. Okay, yeah. fine. So we just take the Clang ID we just built, and we can just run it over arbitrary stuff in uh, the repository here. We can take Clang ID CPP, 
And with modules, this would be all faster, of course. Uh, we now have to switch on the right check because that's a different check. And we have found an early exit. Now we can just use dash fix to apply that. And also it's interesting because we only insert um, the basically the not in open parentheses. The diagnostics actually look nice. Like if we would replace the entire statement, it would be much harder to follow what Flying Tidy actually wants. And that's the diff we did. That really looks bad because it's not formatted correctly. Um, so. so we've integrated client format into Git, as probably most of you know. And then after that, it looks a lot nicer. Right. So Clank, Clank Tidy has now, with the fix we've just developed, this, done this very basic refactoring of an early exit. OK, I think that's all we have. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I'll hand around the mic so you need to answer. Uh, so when you were doing the fixes, you were doing it at a text level, like you insert an exclamation mark and then an open yes. paren and then a close paren. Is there no way to do it like on the tree? So you would say I want to replace the condition expression with a not expression that has that as a child and then... What, is there that any... question comes up all the time. Um, so we have found that for most of the stuff, that doesn't really help you, right? Um, but it makes it a lot harder. So if you actually want to do an AST replacement, what you want in the end is to have a correct AST. And the C++ AST of Clang, unfortunately, has a lot of invariants that are very, very hard to get right. Um, so it's, it's easier to do a texture replacement and just reparse the AST. And then, right, SEMA and all that has taken care that all the invariants are correct again. And you have the check that you actually didn't break the compilation. Any other questions? Hello, very interesting this. Uh, I wonder, is there a tutorial uh, about how to write the AST matchers? That's pretty hard, I think, to get to start with. So your question is whether there's a tutorial or? Yeah, um, there's a talk, right? No. There's a talk from? Like, uh, I, I don't know, Alex, I think, is Alex in the room? No. I, I think we have some documentation. Um, drop me an email and I'll, or just, we can just search for Clang Query. Yeah, so with Clang Query it's a lot easier, and again, sorry for like the mess up with the screen. Um, it actually, with the syntax completion and the immediate feedback, you, it, it actually has gotten a lot easier. Like you have like a second turnaround cycle. Um, we have a lot of documentation of what every single matcher does. Um, so it's, it's hard, but it has gotten easier. And if you have concrete suggestions on, on how to improve or how to write a good tutorial, we'd be very happy. And there's Eli. Eli has written, a, Eli Bedeski has written a great post about uh, how to use that kind of stuff, where you also can learn about Clang Query. Any more questions? Right, and thank you.